Good day, learners! In this video, I will explain some of the terminologies used in research paper writing. If you haven't watched my video about research paper and its parts, kindly check the description box for the link and make sure to watch it. Now, let's get started! First, what are technical terms? Technical terms are words that have specific meanings in each area of study. In other words, they are words that people use in a specific career field like research. So, what are the technical terms or common terminologies used in research? Let us start with abstract. Abstract summarizes the contents of the research. It is composed of one paragraph with 300 words or less. Ang pinakapindaan na abstract ay sinusulat kapag natapos mo na ang kabuoan ng iyong research paper. It discusses the important aspects of the entire paper like the overall purpose of the study and the research problems you investigated, the basic design of the study, and the major findings or trends found as a result. Next, we have the introduction, or in some institutions, they call it as the background or chapter 1. It is one of the first things the researcher writes in the research. It is where you mention your specific topic from a general standpoint. It establishes the scope, context, and significance of the research. It also states a piece of short background information about the variables as well as purpose, hypothesis, brief explanation of methodology, and potential outcomes. If you watch the first part of week 1, you will know that scope dictates the extent of how deep you will explore the research questions. You have to indicate specific restrictions such as time frame or population so that the research is feasible to finish. Halimbawa, kung nais mong malaman ang kaugnayan ng economic status ng mga bata sa kanilang marka o grado, ay eh kailangan maging malinaw kung anong markahan o quarter ba at anong taong panuruan o school year ang iyong tinutukoy. Gayun din, kailangan maging malinaw kung marka sa kabuuan o specific subject lang ang iyong kailangan. Furthermore, significance of the study is the part of the research where you must briefly discuss the beneficiaries, significance, and contribution of the study to the society. Ano ang magiging kontribusyon ng iyong research paper sa field o institusyong iyong kinabibilangan at sino-sino pa ang maaaring makinabang dito? Furthermore, purpose from the term itself simply states the aims and objectives of your research. In some schools, they use statement of the problem instead of this part. Statement of the problem identifies the problems or questions that your research would like to answer. Look at the sample. You can start it with this research six or sought to analyze the and then specifically it's six or sought to answer the following questions. Then you will list the questions that you will work on in your study. While well, hypothesis states what your research may find out, it is stated as it answers your main research question. You must remember that it must be testable, which you can support or refute based on that data that you have gathered. An example of hypothesis is, there is significant relationship between the English language performance and economic status of the grade 10 students. Lastly, possible or desired outcomes are what the researchers expect to happen at the end of the research or study. It is usually written in numbered format. Another term is the theoretical framework. It is an understanding of theories and concepts that are relevant to the topic of your research paper and that relate to the broader ideas of knowledge being considered. 
This can actually support your research. To add, theory is an organized body of concepts and principles intended to explain a particular phenomenon. Now, let us move to number four. That is method or methodology. It refers to the data that is going to be collected and analyzed in the research. It serves as a guide that discusses the details on what data to collect. Is it quality or quantitative data? Who to collect it from? What sampling design will you use? Sa madaling salita, paano ka pumili o pipili ng iyong respondents or participants? Is it random sampling, purposive, convenience, and a lot more? How to collect it or the data collection method? When we say data collection method, gagamit ka ba ng focus group discussions, interviews, surveys, observations, documents and records, or case studies? And lastly, how to analyze it? What statistical procedures will you use in analyzing the data that you have gathered? Number five, conceptual framework. It shows the relationship of research variables and helps you to inform the rest of the design. This is usually under the methodology part of your paper. As you can see on the sample, researchers use chart in making conceptual framework. Here, the sample shows the relationship of the variables such as teaching and learning, family and peer influence, students' financial with academic performance. Likewise, it illustrates and maps out how relevant the variables are to each other. In developing the conceptual framework, it must make sense based on existing studies or theories from your literature review. Number six is concept. It is a term that abstractly describes and names an object, a phenomenon, or an idea. Examples include common demographic measures like income, age, educational level, and number of siblings. Number seven is the results. Results are the findings from the data that are collected from the study. As you can see, results are presented using graphs, charts, and tables to be easily understood by the readers. It is necessary that you provide discussions about the results of your study. Ngunit tandaan na ang pagsulat ng results ay hindi basta pag-iisa-isa ng mga numero kung alin ang pinakamataas at pinakamababa, kundi ang pagpapaliwanag pa ng mas malalim sa mga ito. Number 8 is questionnaire. It is an instrument that is made up of a series of questions to get information from respondents. Note that a questionnaire may or may not be delivered in the form of a survey, but a survey always consists of questionnaire. Number 9 is survey. Survey is a data collection method comprised of multiple choice or rating scales. Mas madali itong gamitin kung ang kailangan mo ay malaking bilang ng respondents or data dahil mas madali itong i-analyze or iskoran. Finally, the references. Reference is located at the last page of the research which can be written in APA, MLA, or Chicago-style format. It lists all the sources that you used in your research. Tandaan na kailangan mong ilagay dito ang lahat ng ginamit mong sources at citations mula sa simula hanggang dulo ng iyong research paper. And so, we are done. Remember all these technical terms for you to have a well-written research paper. Abstract, Introduction, Scope, Significance of Research, Purpose of the Study, Statement of the Problem, Hypothesis, Potential Outcomes, Theoretical Framework and Theories, Research Methodology, Data Collection Method, Conceptual Framework and Concepts, Results, 
questionnaires, surveys, and references. For more videos, do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead.